Hi there, I'm Robbie Carmen, And I'm Joey Deanna. And welcome to this series on Dolby Vision. As professional colorists and educators, we're excited to explain the Dolby Vision finishing process. In this 12-part series, we'll guide you through understanding the essentials of Dolby Vision post-production and delivery, and answer most of your pressing questions about Dolby Vision. Dolby Vision is a perfect match for any HDR project, and Dolby, along with their Dolby Vision partners, have made finishing in Dolby Vision easier than ever. Absolutely. Popular color grading tools like DaVinci Resolve, Baselight, and others now support Dolby Vision's shot analysis without any additional licensing from Dolby or extra hardware. This means that productions of all types and sizes can now leverage the power of a Dolby Vision workflow. That's right, it's not just for Hollywood anymore. And when you need even more control, you can obtain a license from Dolby that makes additional creative tools available. This training will get you up to speed with Dolby Vision, but Dolby also maintains an optional certification program, which includes engineering help, training for colorists and finishing artists, as well as co-marketing. So let's talk about the design of this training so you know what to expect. We'll start out the training series with a quick start video on Dolby Vision mastering, and then jump into Dolby Vision and HDR essential terminology. You'll learn how Dolby Vision maximizes the dynamic range of your content and matches it to the dynamic range of the display. With that knowledge in place, we'll explore what you need to know about HDR and SDR monitoring, both for the colorist and finisher, as well as for clients. We'll also discuss software that supports Dolby Vision and define the role of the Dolby CMU, or Content Mapping Unit. From there, we talk about essential project settings with color grading software, and then we dig into the nitty gritty of setting up both the internal and external Dolby CMUs. After that, we discuss footage considerations in a Dolby Vision workflow and take a look at why we think an HDR grade first approach is important, as well as briefly take a look at some other HDR grading considerations. The power of Dolby Vision is its ability to analyze shots and provide metadata for downstream deliverables, including alternative HDR and SDR targets, effectively allowing you to grade once and then deliver to multiple screens of varying performance levels without much effort on your part and with excellent results. You'll learn about choosing mastering monitors, setting target displays, and understanding the different levels of shot analysis and metadata. In addition, we explore in depth what are known as the optional primary and secondary trims that allow you to control how your images look on devices with less dynamic range than your mastering display, including Rec. 709 SDR displays. Dolby Vision is available on Blu-ray, video on demand, and subscription services, and even live TV, as well as in the Dolby Cinema experience. And Dolby keeps a list of current services in your region available on Dolby.com. We'll explore delivering Dolby Vision Masters in a variety of ways, as well as take a look at the Dolby Professional tools that allow you to create Dolby Vision Masters and associated files. Finally, you'll learn about quality control and how to test your Dolby Vision Masters before delivering to a client or distributor. As you watch this title, there are a few additional things you should know. We're assuming that you're a post-production professional and have an understanding of essential video terms, as well as understand some basic HDR terminology. Don't worry, we'll revisit some essential vocabulary around HDR, but we're not going to define every single technical term. And before we begin, it's important to understand how Dolby Vision licensing works. In grading software that supports Dolby Vision, the base level, or L1 metadata analysis, does not require a license from Dolby. In other words, all users of Dolby Vision-enabled tools have access to Dolby's automatic shot analysis. There's nothing extra to buy. Many people will find that base level L1 metadata provides them with a good image for SDR and the full range of home and professional HDR displays. As we said earlier, if you desire more control, Dolby provides primary and secondary controls which create Dolby Vision trim metadata. These trim tools allow you to fine tune your images for SDR and the full range of HDR displays. We'll explore these controls in detail later on in the series. To gain access to Dolby Trim Tools, you'll need to have a Dolby Vision license. If you want to purchase a Dolby Vision license, visit this page for more details. It's also important to remember that at no point in the Dolby pipeline does Dolby charge content creators, that's you, for the ability to master projects in Dolby Vision. What this means is that projects of any size or any budget have the option of mastering in Dolby Vision with no additional costs or licensing fees. Finally, throughout this title, we are using DaVinci Resolve, and Resolve is a popular tool, and Blackmagic is a Dolby partner. Both Joey and I are Resolve colorists, but Dolby Vision integration is available in many tools, 
And at the time of this recording, Filmlight, Colorfront, and Nucoda are just some of the other partners that offer Dolby Vision support. And while some of this title will focus on Resolve-specific techniques, in general, the concepts will also apply to your chosen software. So we have a lot to cover in this series, but it's going to be a lot of fun. Yeah, I agree. So up next, let's get our feet wet and jump right into a quick start of the Dolby Vision workflow.